Hi, welcome back to Eyeball Aeronautics. Today I thought I'd show a couple of the hot wire cutting tools that I'm using on my latest project, the Fisher. This one is just a little mini bow that I'm using to cut out some pockets for the ailerons. So what it consists of is just two plywood arms, a PVC pipe for a handle, and a screw I use to pull tension on the wire. I have it connected to my 12 volt power supply and what I plan on doing is just following the edges of this hardboard template that I've made. I just want to follow the inside edge around until it cuts out the uh, pocket for the aileron. So as you can see you just follow the edge, move it, try to move it smoothly along the inside and that's it. You Basically, you can see how quick and easy it is to cut out an aileron pocket that way. Um, one thing is, when you're finished, you want to wipe off your wire because otherwise it'll sit there and smoke. And that smoke can be toxic from what I understand. So you also want to make sure that you're doing this in a well-ventilated area. Now, the template is simply made out of a piece of hardboard. And... Uh, the reason I use a template like this is because I can flip it over and cut the other side. You can see there I left a quarter inch leg which when I flip it over will give me the exact spacing on both sides. I simply locate it off the joint where the dihedral and the wing is and that allows me to locate both pockets exactly the same without having to worry about doing too much measuring and it actually is a nice little system it works really well and so that's the first tool I wanted to show you and now we'll move on to the next tool okay for this tool what I thought I would do is show you how I actually make it it's a plunge tool that I use to make um, uh, pockets in the wing for servos. So I start out with 1 16th piano wire and also uh, T60 plugs which you, I get at Hobby King but you can get them at various places. Uh, and so what I want to do start out with a 90 degree bend in the piano wire and then um, I take that 90 degree bend and I size it up against the servo uh, what I want to do is make like a U, a squared off U shape that um, is the same size as the servo itself. So you can measure things and try to bend it according to your measurements, but I just kind of eyeball it right to the side of the servo. And um, what I want to do is make it just slightly smaller than the servo and... Uh, that way when I uh, cut it, if, if it's a little too hot and it, and it undercuts, it, the pocket is still snug on the servo. And if it's a tight fit, the servo will squeeze the foam and it'll, it'll fit nice that way. So once I've got the size, then what I'll do is bend it another 90 degree bend. And then... Um, then... I need to move on to the top. So here you can see the 90 degree bend. Okay, so once you're satisfied with that 90 degree bend and you get it all nice, straight, and square, make certain that it's um, not twisted. And then also you want to uh, size it up again to make sure that it's the the width you want on the on the servo. Then once you have that, then you need to make a couple of Z bends, and those Z bends are so that it will uh, fit in the space on the XT60 plug. So that's what I'm going to do here is just uh, get it all nice, straight, square, and um, put in a couple of Z bends. What I'm trying to show here is that when you make your Z-bends, you can actually um, 
make them not actually a Z to start with, but bend it kind of 90 degrees to each other. And then um, once you have it the way you want, then you, you twist it so that it turns out to be the Z shape because you can't get that little short bend making it uh, a Z, into a Z without bending it first 90 degrees and then twisting it into the into the Z shape. So uh, unless you have, they do make a, a special Z pliers uh, that will make the Z in one motion. But uh, if you don't have that, you can make them like this, 90 degrees, and then and then you'll twist them. And when you twist it, then it's actually the Z shape that you want. And then um, it will get a little tweaked. You'll have to kind of straighten everything back out. But um, that's that's how I make Z bends without that special Z pliers. Once you're satisfied with the shape of the tool you're trying to make, uh, the next step is to solder the wire into the XT60 plug. And so here you can see a little fixture I made. It's just a, actually a plexiglass picture frame that I got at a thrift store with a couple of uh, clothespins, which I also got at the same thrift store. Um, hot glued onto the uh, plexiglass. And uh, it does pretty good for holding things uh, when you solder them. And so from there, I'm just going to solder the wire into the T60 plug. So when you're soldering these together, use plenty of flux and don't be stingy with the solder. Uh, the two materials, the plug and the steel wire are, you know, they're dissimilar materials, so you want to do the best you can to get a good uh, solder joint. Uh, once it's once it's soldered though, it, it does make a good joint and it won't get hot enough to melt the solder, so it actually makes a pretty sturdy, long-lasting little foam cutting tool. So there it is. Now let's plug it in and um, I'll show you how it works. So what we have then is the other half of the T60 plug glued into a PVC uh, cap and pipe that uh, form the handle. And then here I have a piece of plexiglass screwed to a piece of wood and a couple of broom clips that snap the PVC pipe in then you can slide the PVC pipe up and down in those clips to uh, adjust the height so that is more or less my um, foam router is what I like to call it well if you're still with me after all of that let's show you how it works so I'm going to cut a couple of servo pockets in this foam wing uh, if you can see in the video there, there's already a couple of them cut in this wing, but I'm going to cut a third one. So I have a layout line on the wing, and what I'm going to do is uh, position this template that I have made right over the layout line where I want my servo pocket to be. Once that's done, I just have to secure it with some masking tape. So the next thing I'll do is set the temperature of my wire to where it's cutting uh, the foam without undercutting too much or making it too hard to cut so that it deforms the shape of my wire. Now the wire is, is uh, 1 16th inch so it takes quite a bit of current to uh, heat this up. So I'm thinking my battery charger looks like it's pulling about 25 amps there to actually 
heat this one to the temperature that I want. So then once I've got it set, I just hold it over the template, I plunge in, and slide it across, and raise it straight up, and that cuts my pocket. And then for the ears on the servo, I have a couple of little slots. I just hit those slots, and that's it. It's it's that quick. The servo pocket is accurately cut right to the nice tight fit of the servo. And um, all I have to do is just pop the template off, and uh, I have a servo pocket cut in the wing. Well, that's how I cut servo pockets. It's a quick and accurate way to do it, and hopefully this has been helpful, and maybe some of you will want to try and do something similar. So once again, thanks for watching Eyeball Aeronautics, and we'll see you next time.